Hello. Okay, we're ready to start a new video, uh, episode or part 20 of the Jews for Judaism response. Um, now, in this one, he brings up some historical uh, problems with the Gospels, uh, three in particular. So we're going to address them one at a time. So let's listen to the first one. We know that historically the Christian Bible is also quite suspect. For example, Matthew chapter 2 tells us that when Jesus was born, Herod slaughtered every Jewish baby under the age of two in Bethlehem and all the surrounding cities. Now, I would have suspected that had that actually happened, it would have been a big news story. Jo Josephus, if you read Josephus, he writes a pretty detailed history of that time. He'll tell you what Roman governors had for breakfast and yet here, the massacre of every Jewish baby under the age of two, not just in Bethlehem, but in all the surrounding cities are massacred by Herod's army. No one knows about it. Not in the Talmud, not in Josephus, not in Philo, not in any Roman documents. It's not even in any other books of the New Testament. And we don't have an oral history of this. All right. So he's talking about uh, the event that is well known as the slaughter of the innocents. And um, this event, Matthew uh, talks about, and he also gives prophecies that uh, from Micah and Jeremiah regarding this event. Now, the rabbi's argument is that, oh, uh, Josephus and other historians don't talk about it, therefore it never happened. Well, that's like saying, well, I've never seen it, therefore it doesn't exist. Uh, that's a flawed argument that you have to decide, well, is there enough proof that it never happened? Or is there no proof that it ha whether it happened or not? And could it have happened? So, Josephus, uh, he devotes well, two or three chapters to uh, Herod the Great. Because Herod was one of the uh, pinnacle figures in history. Um, he did many things. And perhaps Josephus just thought that that particular thing was not, didn't make the cut in his book. Um, because Herod, he fought battles, big wars. He built fortresses all over Judea. He, um, he was an architectural genius. He, he expanded the temple. He built citadels on top of mountains cities. Um, he built the port city of Caesarea and that to archaeologists is one of the uh, is the oldest known use of underwater concrete. So this is Herod's stuff. Um, he's just uh, very famous for his architecture and uh, He's also famous for killing his own children if they became a, a, if they seemed to be a threat to his power. Um, and he killed many, many people. He, he set up a, uh, a golden eagle outside, outside of the temple, a symbol of Rome. Um, he brought uh, Babylonian Jewish priests to be the high priest in the temple. Um, this was to show himself uh, to, uh, to the diaspora or the Jews not living in Israel. He, he made it um, himself more palatable to them. Um, and in history he is uh, remembered as a tyrant by both Christians and Jews. Uh, 
also one could argue that the uh, book of Obadiah is talking about him. The Though he builds his nest like an eagle, he will be brought down to hell. Um, the, the, the fall of Edom. See, Herod, Herod was an Edomite king. During the Maccabean period, the Edomites were forced into Judaism. And, uh, and then Herod's father, he, uh, he got in good with the Romans, and the Romans placed the Edomite family of Herod as the kings in Jerusalem and in Judea. So that was the Edomite kings. They ruled up until the fall of the Second Temple. And after the fall of the Second Temple, the Edomite nation vanishes into history. So this is a, a marker, a prophecy marker, the end of the Edomites. And uh, there's also, there's more about that. Uh, I have videos about that. Um, I can't recall off the top of my head which videos they are. Now, when he's talking about the slaughter of the innocents, I do have a one video that digs pretty deep into that. And that video is called Bethlehem of Ephrathah. And it's episode 17, part 7. In, the, in my History of God series. I'll put a link up to it. And it talks quite a bit about the um, slaughter of the innocents and Bethlehem's place in prophecy. And um, at the end of that video, there's a bit of a rant because that video was done during the, uh, the BLM riots in 2020 of uh, in the United States after George Floyd was killed. The uh, rioting, the black protesters were rioting in Minneapolis or Minnesota and uh, destroying black businesses because blacks didn't have enough prosperity. So uh, I went on a bit of a rant over that. I turned out to be right because BLM turned out to be helping nobody but themselves. Um, so that was a pretty upsetting time. And uh, so what else do I have to say about this? I think if you just watch that video, there's, there, it's quite a fantastic study. It, it's one of the most more phenomenal studies that I've uh, ended up doing, just out of curiosity, studying Matthew and Jeremiah and Micah regarding the slaughter of the innocents and Ephrathah. Ephra, Ephra, Ephra. um, many don't realize that David, King David, was an Ephrathite. So that's quite an interesting study. Uh, I highly recommend it. And, um, you know, why did Jesus, Josephus not talk about the slaughter of the innocents? Well, Bethlehem was not a city. He likes the, the rabbi here, or he likes to talk about it as if it's a city and it had surrounding cities because he wants to make it sound like thousands of babies killed. Why did nobody talk about thousands of babies? Uh, Bethlehem estimates from historians that I took a quick look at, um, they estimate that Bethlehem was maybe 1,500 people, and uh, the surrounding area would be little enclaves here and there around Bethlehem in the same valley kind of thing. Uh, and they estimate that maybe a dozen or two dozen babies were slaughtered. 
It's like the prophet Micah says, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you be little among the cities of Judah. So it's a little place. And though it's a little place, and though the slaughter of their babies was a huge thing to them, it may have been a little thing in the big picture. Uh, though it's a little thing, out of you will come the ruler. Out of you will come the Messiah. So it's a big thing to God. And um, it ties into Rachel. Uh, Rachel's children. So how does how does Bethlehem become Rachel's children? It, it's an interesting study. So I just point you to that. Now um, let's go on to see his next point. The same author Matthew says that when Jesus was crucified. The graves of many righteous people in Jerusalem opened up and the righteous people came out of those graves and they walked around Jerusalem and appeared to many people. Now, if I was Matthew, I would have just told the story and I would have said when Jesus was crucified, the graves opened up and the people came out and then I would have shut my mouth. But he says that they didn't just come out of the graves, they came out and they walked around Jerusalem and they appeared to many people. Now again, I would have thought that if that had happened, that you're seeing all over Jerusalem these dead righteous people coming out of their graves, say, wow, I haven't seen you, in, you know, since your funeral. That would have been a big news story, huge. No one knows about it. Not even Mark, not Luke, not John, not Paul, no one. Just Matthew writes it, and we're supposed to just say, yeah, it must be true. If it's in Matthew, it must be true. Okay, this is another case of I don't see it, therefore it doesn't exist. Um, now, these people who witnessed the, this resurrection of uh, some of the people who came from the graves after Jesus was raised from the dead, they would probably become Christians. And being Christians, they would have been run out of the synagogues, uh, not listened to, and called crazy by everybody else. And that's just the way things are. Uh, you know, when when the Jews left Egypt, did the Egyptians write down, our slaves rose up against us and they left and our army was drowned in the sea. They didn't write that down. Uh, they're embarrassed by that. Uh, so they wrote something else down. Um, it's the same thing here is, you know, down. Oh, Jesus was crucified, and then there was a bunch of people raised from the dead. No, they didn't believe it then, and they didn't write it down, and they just didn't. It, denial is a powerful thing. So I wouldn't expect them to write all that down on. It's just, uh, it's just that one of those things, you either believe it or you don't believe it. Was the world created in seven days? Well, you either believe it or you don't believe it. It's, there's no way of knowing for sure. Yeah, there's no witness, there's no, other than Matthew, um, there's no uh, evidence to look at. So. It's just, uh, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Um, because the people who would have believed it and would have seen it were not listened to. It's like many other things. So let's look at what else he says. Matthew and the other gospel writers say that Pontius Pilate, who was the procurator of Judea that crucified Jesus, Matthew says he didn't really want to do it. He was forced into it by the Jews. Really, Pontius Pilate was a nice, sweet guy, and he was prepared to let Jesus go, and he wouldn't want to harm, God forbid, an innocent hair on Jesus' head. So when you read the Gospel of Matthew, it sounds like Pontius Pilate 
was nice and sweet and a very gentle guy and he wanted to let Jesus go. But what happened? Those ugly, miserable, rotten, terrible Jews, they forced him into it. So you get the impression that he's easily cowered by the Jews. And yet, when you study Pontius Pilate in all the historical sources, in Josephus, in Philo, we're told he wasn't just a brutal procurator, he was the most brutal. And he bu butchered and massacred people at the drop of a hat, and he was so vicious that even the Romans removed him from his post in Judea because he had committed so much bloodshed. So I'm supposed to believe Matthew's story that he was a nice, sweet guy. All right. This is a, another straw man argument that he makes. Is, uh, what's a straw man argument? It, it's when you first you talk about your opponent's position but you don't really give the opponent's position. You make something up to be your opponent's position. That's the straw man. And then you start attacking that straw man. But you're not actually you're not actually defeating your opponent, you're defeating a puppet of your opponent because you have no answer. So let's take a look at Matthew and, and uh, so what was the straw man first of all that uh, the rabbi made? He said that, uh, oh, Matthew paints Pilate as this beautiful, happy man that loved Jews and that didn't want to kill Jesus and he was such a nice guy and these nasty Jews made him do it. That's that's the straw man argument. So let's look at what really, what Matthew really says, first of all, okay? Because uh, there's no argument that Pontius Pilate was a tyrant. Uh, all historians, Christian and Jews, uh, agree. Pontius Pilate was a tyrant. He wasn't so happy, nicey. So what does Matthew himself say? We'll take a look at Matthew chapter 27, starting in verse 15. Okay? Let's see if I can read it this way. Easier. Now at the feast of the governor, uh, was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barnabas. So it was the feast of the Passover. And at the feast, the Passover's coming. And apparently it was a tradition for the governor to release a prisoner. As um, it's like the Passover feast and it... And it um, the Romans are participating in the Jewish festival by releasing, it's like the, the atonement, the release of a prisoner. Okay? So, therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said to them, Who will you that I release to you, Barnabas or Jesus, which is called the Christ? The Barnabas was a famous thief and robber. <coughs> So he's asking the people, which one do you want me to release? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. It was, uh, he knew that Jesus was being put up there by the Sanhedrin council out of envy. And he knew that it wasn't just. But did he care? Okay. Now when he was set down at the judgment seat, his wife sent to him, saying, Don't have anything to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. So Pilate's wife had a big dreams about Jesus and told him, Don't have anything to do with this. This is a bad omen. Okay? But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barnabas and destroy Jesus. So the chief, the chief priests were in the multitude uh, guiding them all to ask that 
Barnabas be released and not Jesus because they had to get rid of Jesus for political reasons. Okay? So it's not uh, the Jews are the crowd and it's the priests that are doing this bad thing, right? The governor answered and said to them, which of the two will you that I release to you? And they said, Barnabas. Pilate said to them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said to him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? Now it's not that he cares. He, he's trying to get out of it because of what his wife said. It's a bad omen. He wants. He doesn't want anything to do with a bad omen. Okay. <clears throat> and when Pilate saw that he could not prevail, nothing, but that rather a turmoil was made, the crowd was getting stirred up by all of this. He took water and washed his hands in front of the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See you to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood will be upon us and our children. So Pilate uh, seemed to have gotten himself out of the guilt of this because he was afraid of the bad omen that his wife had in the dream. You see? It's not because he is such a nice guy. <clears throat> then he released Barnabas to them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Okay? So that is not the picture that the rabbi uh, set up for us, is it? As if uh, Matthew thinks he was such a nice guy. Um, Matthew didn't say any such thing. So that concludes our video for today. Uh, I'll see you next week. And don't forget to like and subscribe and help me out with the channel. Thank you very much.